continuing where we left off, we're going to start introducing some extra nodes from the previous nodes that we talked about initially. And in this particular video, I'm going to start working with a reference, uh, or rather, rather the reverse node. I'm going to talk about the contrast node, and let's see if we can get through these remappers at some point. Right, so getting to the reverse node, um, this is a simple simple node that takes the input information from our color on the one side and just looks at the reverse values of the two and pumps it out right as is. So if we were to take this um, mask file, take the out color into the inputs, you can immediately see just by connecting that to there our material viewer is already showing us the opposite or reverse color of the previous image. So if we solo just the file node, you can see the result of the original file going through the reverse that propagates the information correctly. And then if I were to drag the out to our color on the material, that would swap around the colors correctly, showing it the way it's supposed to. If we were to just bypass the reverse node going straight into the color, let's do that again. We can see that the resulting color is definitely the opposite, or rather the reverse. So this node is very useful if you want to just quickly take some information coming from your source image and you would like to uh, swap around the values and then take that information and utilize that for something else like maybe your specular or the bum or so on and so forth. I find this one quite useful but there might be reasons for you not to want to add an additional node. So there is some options inside of the some of our file nodes and some of our um, I know the ramp has this particular attribute that I'm going to talk about and I'm sure some of these uh, fractal nodes and uh, noise nodes uh, also have some of those properties. So the node that I'm referring to is simply, let's get rid of this reverse, is simply an option inside of the file itself and if we scroll down on the attribute editor you'll find there's a, a color balance and there's an effects tab. So the color balance has some options for default color, color gain, alpha gain, and color offset. And then inside of the effects tab, just below that, we have an additional option over here that's pointing to invert. So this one technically does exactly the same thing. If we were to click on it, you can see that the E values has been passed through and inverted the colors. So there might be a reason for you not to want to add an additional node to pass the information through, but other than just reversing the information through the actual file. So you can always go and see if there's an effects tab on your, your nodes that you would like to pass through your shader and actually check if it has an invert function. If it doesn't, then that means you will have to create an additional reverse node that you will find under our utilities tab over here. If we scroll down a bit, we should be able to find that more or less at the bottom of the list. Right, so this one was quite simple and I think it's definitely worth knowing about and um, there's quite a few things we, that we can do with that. Continuing from there, we have a contrast node, and this particular one is, I guess it's a, a very sim simple kind of um, contrast node, and I will relate that to how Photoshop works. Um, let's quickly just drag and drop this into our value section. You can see the information is passing through there. The out value goes straight into our color, and the result of our texture has been doubling up in contrast. So if we quickly have a look at the contrast node, you will see that the current contrast value is set to 2. So what's happening here is we're essentially telling the texture 
looking at the values that is given to it, or provided to it, we are bypassing uh, or sending that information, contrasting it, and then that is going straight into our shader. So there's one additional attribute in here that's called the bias, and I found that there's a, a bit of confusion with regards to how how this um, attribute works. To kind of explain this, I'm going to open up Photoshop and um, just create a clean document. Let's do File New and let's make that um, a nice big canvas. 2048. There we go. And I'm going to make my brush a little bit smaller and make that black. There we go, that's good. Right, so to explain this, I'm going to give you guys a little graph that kind of represents a range of values. So on this side of the, the scale, we have a value of 0, and on this side we have a value of 1. So we might have some contrasted colors, let's say, like a histogram that's kind of doing something like that, and it's spiking over here, something like that. So meaning we have some really dark gray values, we have definitely some midterm values, and then some, some spikes in the highlights on the particular image. So to, to understand how the bias works, think of the bias as um, um, a means of thinking which range of that, those values would you like to consider for the contrast. So if we break it down what the word actually means, uh, bias simply means to, to have an understanding of a concept and then using that concept to drive the, the idea across that something is more important than other. Um, let's take an, an obvious example. If I were to say um, my bias to, to apples is I love apples and someone else uh, is thinking of, of apples as something that's disgusting and they don't like the, the whole thing with um, how it tastes and so on and so forth. And if I were to try and explain to people, listen, apples are great, then I'm being more biased towards apples than some other person. So naturally, I'm going to try and make people uh, try it out for themselves. So if we were to say that um, I have a set of values like I have here, and I want to have all these values that we are viewing um, in the original sample to be considered for the new set of ranges for the contrast node, then I'm going to draw the same kind of graph thingy. And what I'm doing is I'm saying essentially this line over here, I'm biasing it closer to, let's say, the black point over here. So this line now becomes, let's say, call this line A and line B. And then this is, let's say, um, doesn't really matter. Let's call this um, X for now. So essentially what I'm saying is the new range from A from X to A is now being compressed to to B. So now the, the new range of values will be considered XB. So that means the information that is between X and B is now the part or the values that's being considered for the contrast to now take hold of and really amplify those values. Um, and that's essentially how this thing works. So if we were to quickly look at one of our images, I'm going to get rid of this, um, this levels adjustment and I'm going to apply some sort of an exposure adjustment on top of that. If I do that, then we have some options over here for exposure and then we have a value for offset. Now think of the exposure as in the overall brightness slider and then the offset is essentially pushing the values closer to the darker side or closer to the lighter side so that when the exposure is being applied 
that those values are clamped closer to the darker points than it is to the lighter points. That's essentially what we're doing. We're just shifting the values so that when it does the exposure or the contrast, that it is essentially um, concerning only those bits of information. And anything outside of that range is essentially falling off. Going back to Maya, if we were to look over here, the default value is already set to 50% gray, 50% value. So meaning the values that we have in our contrast is taking the 50% gray values as the most important and anything below that, and then clamping those values to a contrast of two. So if I were to push all three of these values closer to a value of two, uh, let's do 0 0.2, 0 0.2. You can see that we're essentially considering um, a larger range between the um, the white points uh, than than we have to the darker points. Meaning our contrast is definitely um, affecting the the brighter areas more. And if I were to reverse it around, we would say 0 0.8, 0 0.8, and 0 0.8. Now we have a larger range from 0 to 0.8 to consider for the contrast, thus making the contrast um, much more darker. So that's how the contrast mode works. And uh, you guys can definitely utilize that for, for if you want to amplify the, the contrast values between your textures, whether it's a fractal or noise or solid fractal or any of our 2d or 3d textures right in the next video i'm going to start talking about the let's have a look over here we're going to talk about the different remappers and see how we can utilize those in our shader system i'll see you guys in the next one cheers